Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Black the Age, and you know, over the course of the past couple months, I've been maybe one of the only people on YouTube that has been somewhat vocally supportive of Queeby. Now, that being said, I haven't watched Queeby now in well over a month. In fact, I kind of forgot that it exists most nights because no one I know was talking about it. No one I know was checking it out, and that's actually spelling some doom for the streaming platform. In fact, news broke today that Jeff. Jeffrey Katzenberg is probably going to have to lay off roughly around 10% of the Queeby workforce because they are not able to get the foothold that they thought they were able to get. Now, this is for a number of reasons. One, the way the content is released. It is still only released to mobile unless you have an iOS device and then you can stream it to your TV. No, thank you. Give me a dedicated app to watch this on my TV. You did that. That was number one screw from the start. HBO Max doesn't work with Roku. They are losing out on so much potential revenue because they don't have a deal signed with them or Amazon Fire Stick. That's a big problem. Not having it on your on your on your TV or your or your PC or on your on your Xbox or your streaming device uh, that is killing the brand right now, especially given the fact that we are in the global pandemic. And that's the other aspect of it as well. The global pandemic. They should have delayed the release of Quibi simply because it wasn't the right time to do it. Uh, it was, it is in fact designed to be a service that you watch on your commute to and from work while you're on the toilet or on, while you're on a 15 minute break. That is the whole point of that particular streaming service. And like I said, it's brilliant in that design. It's brilliant to try to create the water cooler elements, but the way that it releases its content daily is dumb. It burns through content so freaking fast. And I know that's part of their business model, but I don't think they thought it through well enough. I really don't. I don't think they looked at the state of the, uh, I think they thought the, the industry was going one direction when in fact it's not. Binging culture is actually dying out more often than not. And the reason why is because it's too much too fast. In the last two months, people have been binging and binging and binging content because they've been home and they're already burning through their backlog on Netflix and looking for more things to watch. So then Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and all these other places have to then start coming together to figure out or start bringing everyone and their teams together uh, to put out content faster. But now that we are kind of coming into the time when these productions can start to resume, like for example, Netflix just gave the green light to Witcher season two to resume filming, which is fantastic. Uh, we are going to see, you know, a, 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 a lapse in content. And that would be the perfect time for Quibi to come on in and go, hey, we're offering an alternative for you for stuff for you to watch now. Here we go. But instead, they've just been burning through content. And I just like I, I'm not saying that Jeffrey Katzenberg is not a is not a smart person. He's a very intelligent person. He clearly understands some good aspects of this. He clearly gets some idea of what is, you know, of where things are. But there's like, let's say like they're like 90% of the way there, and then they fumble that last 10%. That first 90% that they did well, yeah, they no one cares about that. Is that last 10% everyone pays attention to? It's that crossing over the finish line that everyone pays attention to. And right now, they're not crossing over that finish line. Right now, what they're doing is screwing up massively. And I'm telling you, like if, if, if you actually watch Queeby, which probably not a lot of you are going to watch this video because you don't care about Queeby because you don't have it. Then the other factor of that too is right now, no one's paying for it. Everyone got a 90 day free trial in hopes that they would then want to continue paying the $5 a month after that. It was a way to get people to come on in. And then after that 90 days, bam, you get your five bucks. And then from there it keeps going. And on average, a person might give $60 a year to that service, which is relatively cheap compared to other alternatives. But even Apple TV is $5 a month. And that allows you to, to watch it on a multitude of devices, not just stuck to your phone, even though their content is no one talks about Apple TV content either. So there's that too. But then you've got Peacock on the horizon and that's going to be $5 a month with ads, but that's also going to give you access to new content, new shows, original content they put out there, which is something again, people might be drawn to because of having that extensive back catalog of having universal content, whereas Quibi is all original. 
Quibi absolutely needs to start talking to the audience out there and start really, really working with them to get them to start to tell their friends about it. And that's the problem. There's no kind of influencer initiative in order to bring people to the table. And that's why 10% is only the beginning of what eventually is going to end up crumbling the platform. They're not out of the game yet, and I'm sure they're going to be able to put together enough funding to be able to keep it going for a while. But at the rate it's burning through cash and probably people burning through content that they actually want to see on there they're running out of problems like i said i haven't opened the app in over a month and i think about it sometimes i do i think about it before i go to bed I'm like do i want to watch creepy before i go to bed and then i'm like eh, i don't even know what's on there right now no one i know is talking about it and i don't want to take the time to start thumbing through to find something to watch Nothing about it is gripping me. There were shows in the beginning I liked uh, quite a bit. I liked Flipped. That was great. Uh, Dummy was pretty fantastic. I liked Survive. Uh, I liked The Most Dangerous Game. There was a lot there that was interesting. Now we're at a point where it's kind of like, okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll dive in before the end of my three months to see if I want to keep going or not. They're not making any attempt to communicate with me via push notifications or email blasts or anything else like this. So... If they don't care, honestly, then the question becomes, why should I care? However, I leave it to you, your thoughts, your opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you guys all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you again for watching and peace out.